And we are live. Well, I guess technically I am live. Jen isn't feeling well and will not be joining us. So go ahead and uh, send thoughts, prayers, good wishes, all of that their way. But we are here. There I go with the we again. I uh, hope you are doing. <laughs> I have, a, I have a text from Jen letting me know that uh, I need to start the stream yard. But yes. Um, yeah. What's up? How y'all doing? I have been busy with laundry. Well, I've been busy with laundry all week. But dishes and accounting and all that good stuff. So, yeah. It's quiet in here. I uh, I came this close to canceling sprints today. I was like, I, I don't know. Long day, long week. I'm not sure if I was feeling it. But um, I thought I would come and see y'all for a little bit at least. Hey, Toya, happy birthday. What are you doing for your birthday? And yes, yes, so much adulting. We do not like it. Do not like it at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, Emma, how's it going? Currently waiting on storm storms to stop. I can read. I promise. Waiting on storms to start and hoping to read a lot. That sounds like an excellent goal. We, uh, we're in favor of all the reading goals around here. But yeah, hopefully the storms will not interfere with anybody's electricity and all of that which I should I should plug in the computer because I have a bad habit of uh, forgetting to plug it in and then it starts losing battery as uh, as I go live so yeah chilling for the birthday is good sometimes that's just the best thing like just not having to deal with with anything just be like all right for my birthday, I would like a vacation from all of my responsibilities. Hey, Kiana, how's it going? What are you up to? I was just saying that Jen is not feeling well, so will not be joining us, unfortunately. But uh, all of the good birthday wishes for Toya. So, good stuff. What's everybody reading tonight? Kiana is working again. Boo hiss. We do not like that. I mean, having a job is important. Having a job and income is, is helpful, but but having to fulfill our responsibility end is uh, such a bummer. Toy's youngest is sort of hanging out in the room, but he's the baby, so he's excused. All right, that's fair. That's fair. As long as long as he can manage to be cute and uh, no trouble. So we hope that's going well. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe it is already April. How did that happen? I just, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I was realizing that this marks the Beginning of the second quarter. Okay. What besides your birthday makes April the best month ever, Toya? This is this is what I need to know. Because I am all for celebrating the best month. I tend to think it's October. But, I mean, I might be biased because I got married in October. Or maybe I got married in October because it is the best month. So, which way is it? But, no. Tell me, tell me why April is the best month. Spring, Easter, okay, yes, yes. Um, wait, wasn't Easter in March this year? Yes, it was the last day of March, but anyway. They have the best birthstone, all right, all right. We've got a contender for August. I can't stand the heat in August, but to each their own. Yeah. 
All right, let's see. Toya, Toya is not sure about this claim. Why is August the best month? Emma, you feel free to chime in if you've got a, a vote for the best month also. Okay, Easter was March 31st, but we always count it as April. I always assume it's in April, but it, it does vary in, yeah. Anyway, August is Kiana's birth month. I still got to make Jen send me that list of birthdays. I have not gotten it yet. What a shame that work is calling. And me being busy, I'll call her back on our first sprint. Aaron Kiana's birthday is Book Lovers Day. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's that is a that is a good contender. Mm -hmm. We need to make up book related holidays for our own birthdays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Whitney Houston's birthday. All right, all right. I am a terrible human being who hardly, who drops her crackers, apparently, you know, who hardly ever listens to uh, music. So I know of Whitney Houston, but I have no particular feelings. That's terrible. Especially terrible because my husband's a musician. So. Here I am balancing out his love of music. Miss Cracker apparently does not wish to be eaten. Oh, well. Anyway, I can't figure out what the light is doing today. Maybe I have to put on the regular overhead light to make it stop doing this. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway. Oh, I know of her. I know she's really famous. I just, you would have to tell me what her songs are, and then I might be able to tell you if I've heard them in a store or not. But yeah, no. It was apparently not meant for me to eat them. I have the uh, sun-dried tomato and basil wheat thins, which sun-dried tomato, I can't say sun-dried tomato anything is good, but I like a lot of sun-dried tomato stuff. Okay. I will always love you. I have heard that. Hey, Audrey. Hey, Alicia. How is it going? I'm really not a music person. Like, I will listen to a random Christian song now and then if it's meaningful to me or whatever. Or if I find a random song that has a specific beat that, you know, works for me, I might listen to it a couple of times. But I like silence. I honestly listen to these nature sounds if I'm trying to drown stuff out, like my husband watches TV at night and I don't want to hear him. I don't put on music. I put on, you know, the fireplace, the rain noises, or some kind of natural white noise. I don't know if it's actually technically white noise at that point. But anyway, I do audiobooks and podcasts and just not that much music. So, yeah. I'm the weirdo over here. And I know I'm the weirdo, but, yeah. I just, I don't know. Yeah, no. My husband was not playing when we got together. I mean, he had played before and he is playing now, but he was, you know, has no time for it phase of life. But yeah. Yeah. I enjoy sitting here and, you know, watching him play his guitar or bass, but. Yeah. 
I don't have, I'm not a huge musical fan. I'm not like, oh, I love this band. I've always wanted to see them kind of a thing. It's just. But it's okay. He's not a book person, so. If I can put up with him not being a book person. He can put up with me not being a music person. Mm -hmm. Ideally. Ideally, if we could get a time when he has time to play his music, but doesn't have to practice anything on his soundtracks, he could just like casually play over there while I read and that would be perfect ambiance. Like I'm not actively opposed to music. One of my things is that if I'm trying to read, the lyrics will distract me from whatever I'm reading. So I don't like the lyrics when I'm trying to read and I'd rather read than listen to music if I have extra time. So I mean, yes, I agree life would be sad without music, but I don't have a personal massive affinity for it. Um, I just, I'm fine with, you know, music in the store, music in the gym when I'm there. I'm just not like, oh my gosh, I love this song kind of a thing. In the car, I will listen to a podcast, an audiobook, sometimes silence. If I turn on the radio, it's going to be for um, the local news. They have um, the Money Watch twice an hour. So I will sometimes listen to that to see how things are doing economically. Though half the time, it's just a general you know, this is one specific thing. And I'm like, I didn't really care about that little piece. But anyway, yeah, no, I'm, I'm a little weirdo over here. Alicia understands Greg plays the drums. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Um, Caleb has talked about learning how to play the drums, mostly so that uh, he could teach new drummers how to play the drums for church when we end up low on drummers. But yeah. I mean, you can judge a little bit if you want to. That's totally fine. Um, I mean, what kind of friends would we be if you can't give me a little cred now and then? Hey, Jamie, how's it going? Right? How dare Jen get sick on your birthday? It is my understanding that she has, that they have been in bed all day napping. So, um, this is the first time Jen has had a day off in forever that I have not gotten a phone call or anything. I've gotten like three texts. So yeah, make sure you give them cred for that later. Yes. Yes. But by all means, do take Jen's uh, judgmental position. Somebody's got to do it. That's fair. That's fair. I am particular about my podcast. I don't typically like current events podcasts or political podcasts, that kind of thing. Um, my husband was listening to quite a few political podcasts or listening to political podcasts fairly regularly when we first started dating. So I, I tried for a little while to see and it just it pissed me off and I didn't feel like it was fair and yeah. Yeah. No. So I'll do like a a theology kind of a podcast. Be like, okay, let's talk about what it means to love our neighbor, or let's geek out on this random bit. Um, what <laughs> one of my favorite podcasters was doing the Book of Exodus, which is the second of the Old Testament books, and talking about how. Pharaoh was trying to kill all the boys to prevent uh, this this young fledgling nation from having any potential power to to overthrow him or do any harm to him, and it ended up being all the women that uh, that uh, accomplished all of these deliverances that came back to bite him. So, yeah. 
let's see. So yeah, I, I nerd out on that a little bit. Tried audio, but at the end of like the physical copies or ebooks, that's fair. I have been in such a an audio book phase recently. The last couple of arcs I've had, I really wanted there to be an audio book. Because I, I used to think it was really silly people going back and forth between the physical and the audio or the ebook and the audio. But now I kind of like it. Like I can get I can get all the names just right if I'm not sure how a name is pronounced. I can catch a vibe off of them sometimes, but then I can read faster when I'm reading the words for myself. I don't know. I don't know. It does depend on the narrator. Keanu loves the uh, talk radio. Okay. Alicia listens to friends podcast. You just know everybody, Alicia. That is crazy. Like you have friends who write things. You have friends who, who podcast. Your friends just do all of the things. That's cool. Did listen to a political podcast, but I felt it was very negative, so I stopped, but I still follow. Okay, yeah, that's fair. I feel like a lot of politics is negative. Like, obviously, there's plenty in the world about which to be negative, but I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong on this, I should not speak universally, but if, universally, but I feel like a lot of the political podcasts complain about the problems we can all see and blame all one side or the other. And I'm not saying the problems don't exist, but it feels really disingenuous to, to come and complain about everything and say it's all the other guy's fault and not to offer any, any meaningful solutions, I guess. We, we would all love to say like, okay, there's a utopia in which this is exactly how it goes, wonderful. But it's the job of our politicians and representatives to operate in the world in which we live, not the perfect world. So I feel like if they can offer helpful suggestions for, you know, for actual voting, for things that we can do on a community level to, to help out our community, that's great. But if it's just going to be complaining for an hour, that just... That just makes me fat, sad and frustrated and yeah. But that's just me. If I'm on a long drive and the hubby doesn't feel like talking much, then yes, a podcast. Bailey Sarian's podcast is awesome. Okay. But just regular commute, it annoys me. That's fair. I do have to be in the right headspace for a podcast. Um, especially because typically it's going to be discussing a topic and so... I don't want to catch three minutes here and four minutes there and six minutes here and then have it not be cohesive. Here's me wanting my husband to be quiet. I love to look at the scenery. All right. We, if we're in the car together, we like these. This is not sponsored, but we've done a couple of these. Um, this is the better, better language for better love. And I think you're each supposed to take turns picking cards and then, you know, I answer this one and he answers this one or whatever, but um, but we just do, you both answer both of them. Do you ever wish I could read your mind when, um, aside from money, what have you gained from your current job? Um, what do you need from me right now? What activity makes you feel close to me? That kind of thing. So we like those. Uh, if we're trying to have like a meaningful conversation and not just... I don't know, not just mundane conversation, which is not to say that mundane conversation is a problem, but we get so little time together. I want to capitalize on it. Um, oh, let me find this. Hang on, hang on. If I can reach them, they're up on the top bookshelf. Ah, come on, little cards. I didn't drop anything. Nope, I did not drop anything at all. All right, this is my favorite of the card decks. This is the foundation card deck from Dear Young Married Couple. Um, let me find one of them. Uh, okay, so what I like about it is it splits. So it'll ask a question and it's number, numbered in the corner so that you can do them in order, but it has a question and then it has a tip. So this one is, what's a long-term goal you're working toward right now? How can I best help you reach it? 
And the tip is both individual and couple goals are important. Working together makes you exponentially more effective at reaching your goals. Um, describe a time when you felt especially grateful. Studies show that people who practice being grateful are less prone to depression. Tip, start a list of things you're grateful for as a couple. So um, it's done by a, a pair of therapists that are married to each other. Um, so anyway, I liked those sets. We will do those um, in the car sometimes. And they have, they have three sets, I believe, at the moment. They have the realization, the foundation set, the realization set, and the sex expectations. So um, I will leave you to figure out how that goes. But anyway, they're good for, uh, for deliberate conversation in the car, for what that's worth. Um, Audrey's the only one who drives in this house, so I can't watch too much of the scenery. Okay, yep, that would that would be a problem. Yeah, otherwise, uh, nobody will be watching any scenery. Hey, Snazzy, how's it going? Right, right. I mean, if anybody wants to sponsor me on this, um, be my guest. They, uh, they do uh, marriage conferences, and I look at them sometimes and think, oh, that would be fun, but... Like, nah. Alicia used to listen to a lot of true crime pod, true crime podcasts and can't do that anymore. That's that's fair because some of that stuff is just uh, terrifying. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I did not uh, drop the off-topic game. We have put all of our games, well, I guess y'all can see since... Yeah, we've put all of our games up there, up top, so uh, we can get to them, but they're not, they're obviously not a daily use item because, you know, life, so they do not, they do not deserve to be, uh, to be down low, unfortunately, so yeah, the off-topic game has fallen. Right. I think they do couples therapy together. Um, and I don't know how, I don't know if they started training together, but I think they got married pretty young. So yeah. Anyway, um, when we were dating, somebody sent me their way on Instagram and I was like, okay, I don't agree with everything there, but some of it's been, some of it's been cool. Snazzy just got home from work, needs to make dinner and then crafting. <laughs> what are we crafting? Okay, we can do a small game shelf tour. Why not? All right, let's see here. Let's see if we can get a better look. All right. Can I get a better angle on that? Let's see. Yes, if I move the all right, then I'm not holding it weird. Um bum 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 bum. Clue and Catan and Life. I'm assuming everybody knows. Um, let's see here. We have Smart Ass, which we have not played, and Pictionary, which is obvious. The Let's Get Deep, we like a lot of those questions, um, the question type games, which is why Off Topic is on the floor. Phase 10, if you have not played Flux, the little blue one up there, Flux is a lot of fun. Um, we have Ticket to Ride, New York, and, oh, there we go. This is one that I'm we're still looking to review um, for Amazon, but the Throw Throw Burrito is highly entertaining. We like that with a big group of Caleb's family because um, you have to match the cards, and if you do it right then uh people do a duel where they face off you know a certain number of steps turn around and throw the burrito at each other which is a squishy burrito we have all of the scrabble pieces that we used for our wedding um phase 10 if you have not played chameleon that's the sort of greenish one that's way up there um, just under Clue. 
Um, and that's great with a group. We have Taboo over here because we were playing that on Sunday. But um, yeah, that is... Oh, yes, I should have just stood farther away from the shelf anyway. Yeah, that is that is the game shelf hiding on top of uh, hiding on top of the pantry bookshelf. So yes, Snazzy will be painting a little flower pot to be Carizard themed. Okay, I don't know what that is, but I hope it's fun for you. I hope it's very fun for you. Yes, we we like games if if the situation allows. Um, Nerds is a lot of fun. We have Skip Bow hiding in there. Um, phase ten. Yeah. Oh, one night with a werewolf. You can't see it, but that's so much fun, especially because you can get the app on your phone, and so nobody has to be like game master or whatever. Um, you need. You need at least three or four people for a lot of these games, which is why we don't get to play them all the time. But if we're with the right group of family or some friends, it's great. We just can't have friends over here because it's a tiny little apartment. Let's see. One game you cannot play with the family or um, Uno or Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. My mother loves Uno. Um, my husband, oddly enough, had not played it until we met. Yes, my mother loves Uno. We cannot play Monopoly in my family. We had it at one family reunion, and there were tears um, from some of the younger individuals, and I don't think anybody has attempted to play it there since. So, yeah. Pokemon. Yeah, yep. But we were talking... We were talking about what to do for Easter. Um, I've got family within within 90 minutes of here. We could have gone over there after after church or whatever and tried to do something family like. But honestly, we both had to be up really early and we both had to work our butts off, which we are totally fine with doing. But we made a plan to get fire wings and play taboo afterwards, and it was great. We got our food to go, and we came home. And we ate all the food. Well, we ate most of the food. And then we played Taboo and then we ate the rest of the food. So, you know. Oh. Pokino. Like bingo, but with cards on the board. Oh. That's kind of cool. I feel like I've seen a version of this that had a different name. Which is, I mean, there are so many card games. Anyway. That's kind of cool. Sequence. Sequence is what I've played. Um, the new Uno withdraw. To, oh, that's that. That would be crazy. Hey, Teresa, how's it going? Welcome to uh, welcome to our reading sprints. We haven't done any yet, but we might at some point. Can't play Uno with the husband. He cheat. That's just no fun. Cards up his sleeves, his shoes under his butt. Oh man, no. That. I'm inclined to say at least he's bad at it. You don't really want somebody to get good at lying, but yeah. And apparently some casinos have Pocono games. I don't know why I, I kept thinking it had to be Pokemon. Um, but yeah. When we play Nerds, I don't remember all the details, but if we get the big family on my dad's side of the family. We can get, you know, several people playing around a big table. And I have one cousin whose brain just works so much faster than the rest of ours. She can look at her stuff and be playing because you're, you're supposed to be making your piles and you're using your cards and trying to put them out, building ace to king. I think it's ace to king. Um, you're trying to play that in the middle of the pile, but you've got your, your discards and your active cards and all of these use specific cards to put out there. And she'll be playing her thing and going, and then she'll be like, without, without missing a beat, she'll be like, 
dude, you've got this over there. She can be playing all of our hands at the same time and not and not miss anything. It's crazy. <laughs> it's it definitely seems seems like it would be a game changer. Like it's a whole different game with that. Yes, Uno can already cause family fights. I feel like yeah, there. We've done one that's. I think it's Uno Reverse or Uno Flip, where you can play the whole thing, and then there's options like you you switch hands, and then there's options where you flip your your entire hand over, and there's different numbers on the back, and it, it's nuts what they're coming up with these days. Um. But I mean, I guess it's working for them. They keep putting out, you know, different, different uh, fandom, fandom Uno and a couple of diff different variations and, and off they go. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Did anybody grow up playing Aggravation, the marble game? We used to play that. That was fun. Aggravation and Life and Yahtzee were the three I really remember playing as a kid. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Hmm. Teresa and husband love playing tags, upward sequence, and trouble. Oh, I don't know tags. Let me look. Tags game. I'm seeing tags multicolor. Thrilling party game with 15 second turns. Is that is that it? Collect marbles from the board by finding words that correspond to a given letter and topic with only 15 seconds on the sand timer. Players will find as many words as they can before their turn is over, picking up the associated marble to add to their collection. That sounds like a lot of fun. I I also had that thought, Toya. Yeah, I, I also had that thought. I, I'm going to I'm going to hope that they are are clean pants that are being worn separating the the card from any actual butt. But yes, that looks like a fun game. I'm going to have to leave that open in the tab and research it more further. Um I love it. I love a good new game. Uh, I'll go sometimes to Target and just look at the games and be like, should we try this one? Should we try that one? We tried a escape room in a box uh, that was Clue branded recently. And I think if we had had a better idea of what we were doing, it might have gone better. Um, we were a little confused for part of the game. But it was vaguely entertaining. So yeah. Oh, excellent. So many good games out there. So little time. Yeah. Anyway, it is 3.35. I should find us a timer because we are ostensibly here for actual, actual reading. Let us see. What we can manage. Let's see if that'll be any good. Will that get that will not music and a bunch of y'all do not like music. Okay. All right, let us try this. You just had a Willy Wonka moment? Watch the original movie. Willy Wonka said something similar in the movie. Something similar to what? 
because I'm going to be honest, I, I might say that it'll go on my to be watched list, but it will be it will be years before the to be watched list is ever looked at. Given a choice, I will read. Oh, yeah. Yes, so little time, so little time. All right. Let us see. If I can share this screen, okay. All right. Yes, yes, yes. So, I wish we could figure out how to have a group game night. That would be a lot of fun. I don't know of a reasonable way to do that long distance. But that would be a lot of fun. Just come back to Tandoor after uh, we're done at the bookstore and uh, tell them we're going to use their table for an hour and have a big game day. day. You know, more things that aren't going to happen. All right. Well, this customer keeps calling, so I should call them back and find out what they want. And uh, so, okay, so I, I feel like a live stream is feasible, Toya, depending on the game. So many games are dependent on um, you having just the right tokens, tiles, cards, whatever, that are not in the other person's hand, right? So if we're playing Clue, it, it, we all have to have some of the cards to share. Uh, so many of these things, I don't understand how they would be able to work. I guess it would just have to be the right kind of game. Yeah, maybe something on Steam. If we had like Steam over here and our video chat over here, I don't know. I'm not a proper gamer, so I can't figure these things out. But it would be fun. It would be so much fun. A nice little apples to apples or something like that. I don't know. Taboo might be doable. Something where you get a double timer for in exchange for the fact that every time you complete a word, you have to show it to show that you didn't use any of the bat, any of the uh, taboo words. I don't know. Maybe. We shall have to think about that. That would be fun though. All right, let us, let us go ahead and start this sprint. I will see you all in 45 minutes. Happy reading.
All right. Well, well, well. How did everybody do? I don't think y'all can really hear, but um, my husband has started playing. So remember how we were talking about it? it would be lovely. Yes, it is very lovely. I can hear a little bit of him. And uh, it would have been great if work had not interrupted so, so much of my reading time. So I only got a little bit, little bit read, but let's see. Anyway, I was asking how you all have done. Teresa was asking if we just do lives and yes, um, Jen usually joins me. They are sick tonight, which is unfortunate, but we're usually here three to six Pacific, six to nine Eastern. Um, we try to do two sprints. So visit for a while, sprint, visit for a while, sprint, and visit for a while. Usually works out to 245s. Try to do half and half on the visiting reading with varying degrees of success. But yes, that's, uh, that's what we're up to. So every Tuesday, Jen does sprints on Saturday mornings at 11 o'clock Eastern. Their link is uh, the link tree, link tree slash genderqueer, um, if you're interested in those. Lynn's back fat is sweating in this heat, whereas Toya has it dark and raining. So it's crazy how everybody's weather is so different right now. Um, does Ohio still have snow, I think? I think I remember somebody complaining about that. Maybe that was in general, not specifically this week. I'm not sure. But anyway, super crazy. We are 72 today, which is some of the best weather we've had in a while. I'm inside, so I haven't actually seen any of it which I should probably do something about. I am I am supposed to get a little bit of fresh air every day. Oops. Anyway, but rain does seem like very good reading weather. Hey, Dr. B, how's it going? Yeah, everything, everything is going fine now that I'm not uh, dealing with customers. You all are much better than customers. And if anybody says, sees Pat, Tell her I said, hey, I, I think of her every time I think to say hydrate, hydrate. <laughs> Medicate, if it is the appropriate time for any evening medications you are supposed to take. So, yeah. Ooh, Courtney's making cookies. What kind of cookies are you making? I, I could go for some cookies now. I need to get more peanut butter. We are almost out of peanut butter. And peanut butter cookies actually sound good right now. Um, Courtney is not enjoying this rain. That's unfortunate. Toy is turning a year older. So yay, yay. Happy birthday again. This is, this is very good news. Thanks for spending part of your birthday with us. That's pretty cool. And we have a sad. Wow, we are we are most fortunate today. How are you doing, Saf? What's up? What are you doing? Are you reading? What's what's new? Toya has gotten 25 pages of Six Feet Deep Dish by Mindy Quigley. That reminds me of I think it's Quigley Down Under, my mother and uh I guess technically both my parents, but my mother used to watch that um, fairly regularly. I think they got like a an edited copy or something like that. I think I've only seen it once, but I seem to remember there was like some partial nudity or whatever. So they sent it off to get to get edited so that it would come back on, on a clean version. That's random things that come back to you with names. Anyway. Snazzy is 34% into the devil is here in these hills and is finishing up dinner. What kind of dinner are we having? Devil is here in these hills. West Virginia coal miners. Okay. That sounds really interesting. No reading. Going to watch TV soon. All right. Hey, can't argue with that. Do you know what you're going to watch? Or are you just going to see what looks good? 
I suspect Jen will be feeling well enough to sprint on Saturday. We have not spoken at length on the nature of their illness, but I think it's, you know, probably just a quick bug. I don't have any reason to suspect that it's anything major. Um, one of those sleep it off kind of things. So today's Tuesday. I would think that things are going to be normal, but I'm sure that Jen will post in their community tab if anything changes. Um, Richard Osman, comedian and author, The Thursday Murder Club. I have heard about The Thursday Murder Club. I can't remember when I've heard about it, but I know that I have heard about it, and I hope that you'll enjoy it. Um, thank you. That's very nice of you. Um, I never thought too much about my eyes until I met my husband and he liked them. So, yeah, sometimes I feel like it also depends on what I'm wearing. Some days, some days they look greener than others. <laughs> We're out here women supporting women. We, I, we can totally be nice to each other. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> no rules against it. Let's see. Snazzy's a horror person, so that has to be a horror book. Um, I mean, I feel like anything coal mine has to be somewhat horrific. They're, like, the conditions of, of coal mining have, have historically not been fantastic, and yeah. Yeah. I don't know the particulars of this, but uh, yeah, I I don't imagine it's a very happy story. Sweet potatoes and asparagus. Sweet potatoes with cinnamon. Oh, that sounds good. I like my asparagus with a little bit of garlic. But yes, sweet potatoes with cinnamon sounds good. I should get some sweet potatoes soon. That would have been a good thing to get this week. I'm doing... A uh, pot roast with mashed potatoes and carrots. Sweet potatoes would be good on the side. I love sweet potatoes. My family does not like sweet. My family of origin does not like sweet potatoes. So I grew up not having enough sweet potatoes. So my husband will eat them though. So yeah, that would be really good. Maybe I won't get more frozen mashed potatoes. Maybe we'll do a little bit of frozen mashed potato with it part of the way. And we'll do some sweet potato with it the other part. Hmm. I'm a horror person, but this is nonfiction about West Virginia coal miners recommended by a family member. I hope it's good, and I hope it's not as heartbreaking as it sounds. Oh, yes, yeah, sweet potatoes with marshmallows are the best. I love good marshmallows, particularly broiled. Broiled, s'mored, whatever. I like I like a nice toasted marshmallow. When I was growing up, we had a creamery in town that did marshmallow milkshakes they were they were a really old creamery um probably as evidenced by the fact that they're a creamery not an ice cream shop um uh, they shut down eventually but they had like the the glass milk bottles and whatever and until they shut down we would go over there sometimes and they would do marshmallow milkshakes which i do recommend um I have made them a couple of times now. I take the vanilla ice cream and whip it up real good. And then I take mini marshmallows and toast them on the broiler and then mix them in. And uh, you get a little bit of the, the toasted flex spread out through it. Really good. That's all right. You can have your marshmallows separate. Um, if, they, if they touch and get mixed together, I will eat them for you. Mm -hmm. Just got asparagus and artichoke mixed up. Okay, okay. Those are both good. Those are both good. We usually steam our artichokes and broil our asparagus, bake and broil our asparagus. I don't do a ton with artichokes, honestly. The only way we ever ate them growing up was we would steam them and then dip them in mayonnaise. Um which I guess just doesn't feel like a super healthy veggie to me. Because um, at that point, you're just eating the mayonnaise. And as a kid, I was not a big fan of mayonnaise. I can do it now, but as a kid, I was not a fan. Been in a vegetable mood for the past few days. Been eating them like crazy. I love that. 
I went to go get my groceries yesterday and they did not give me my carrots, but they gave me like, like 10 or 12 um, Greek yogurts and a thing of blueberries and a thing of strawberries. I think they got some orders mixed up, but I had a little granola already. So I've been having fruit parfaits this week. I chopped up all the strawberries before I could have a chance to uh, let them start going bad. So I had had one yesterday and one today. It's good. I mean, it is it is objectively delicious. Um. I just want to make a whole big thing of sweet potato pie and then have a little bit of sweet potato with a whole bunch of marshmallow and then put more marshmallows on top. Ooh, I love some baby carrots. Yes, I, I will have to go get the carrots that did not come with my order because I, I don't know. I feel like we need to have carrots with our roast. Since they weren't there when I was making the roast, I'm probably just going to oven roast them. My grandmother used to do like a garlic herb Parmesan mixture and she would just coat the carrots in that and then put them in a glass pan and bake for a couple of, no, I, I started to say a couple hours, like 40 minutes, something like that. Um, we would do potatoes and carrots that way. Ooh, we have leftover potatoes from the last time I needed whole potatoes. Maybe I will do potatoes and carrots and not get more of the frozen potato stuff. Then we'll do one batch of mashed potatoes and one batch of roasted potatoes and carrots. Hmm. Yes, marshmallow milkshakes are delicious. They are, nobody does them and they are so good. You just, you take a big cookie sheet, foil on top of it, spray it real good so the marshmallows don't stick too much and you get your big mixer so that you can get the whole thing of them like directly in there. Your your milkshake got to be ready to go before you put them in there because it doesn't take it doesn't take long. I don't even think it takes a minute half the time. Um, depends on your broiler, but you got to watch them real careful and then right in. Oh, it's so good, so good. Carrots with red pepper flakes. Hmm. Do you do the whole red pepper flakes? Do you? Do you grind them up a little bit? I'm trying to decide if it would be too much spice or if they would just sort of mismatch. That sounds good. Don't mind me just making notes. Ooh, marshmallows with Rice Krispies, yes. And if you, uh, let your butter brown just a little bit first. Um, you get a little bit of a, you get a little bit of that brown butter flavor with your Rice Krispies, which can be delicious. Yeah. One year I did uh, Rice Krispies for Halloween and I did a little bit of the white and then I did a batch that were yellow and a batch that were orange. So I could put them all in like a round pie pan, mash them all down and then when it, was chilled, I could chop them up and they turned into basically pie slices that looked like candy corn. You know, green vegetables, it's fine. Rice Krispies, Rice Krispies, carrots are good. Carrots are good. I have, I'm, I gotta wonder if it's worth it. Like that seems like a lot of work for it. And I mean, I have mixed feelings. Like on the one hand, it seems like a lot of work. On the other hand, there's a lot we excuse for saying like, oh, it's just a lot of work, so I'm not going to bother doing it. Um, and then we just eat all sorts of stuff and it's probably not super healthy for us. So there, there is something to be said for, for slightly cleaner eating, though. I don't know. I guess I would try it if... I needed a little bit of Rice crispy, a little bit of crispy rice, however that goes. Could be interesting. Right? This is us. We're here for books and food. Feed us and let us read. 
I feel like that's all right. Like everything in moderation. As we have a little bit of balance. We eat, we eat some junk, we eat some veggies, you know, throw it all together and, and our, our bodies manage, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it does. It seems like, what did I do to my hair? It seems like an awful lot of work. Ah, I, I forget these things. I, I do not have a proper list of all the boycotts. Um, I also don't eat Rice Krispies on the regular or crispy rice or any of that. So, yeah. yeah exactly. Like, I, I want everybody to be treated well. I really do. I just, I, I, I don't have the capacity to keep on top of everything all the time. And I feel like there's, there's not really anything we can buy that's not got something attached to it. Like maybe if you find something local mom and pop, but I mean, at that point, do you know what went into it that they purchased? I, this, there's a thing in um, the good place. I don't know if anybody's watched it and I will try to avoid major spoilers. Um, but there comes a point where they're asking, you know, philosophical questions. And one of the questions is, can you really do anything ethically in terms of, of consuming? Because, there's something attached to everything. You know, you don't know how your flour was produced and how it was grown and where your coffee was was grown. And you can look into places that are ethically sourcing it if you if you are privileged enough to be able to afford that. Um, but even then there's there's no guarantees. And you know, you figure out that you're you're sourcing your coffee ethically, but then you're eating an espresso cake and you don't know where those coffee beans were sourced and all of these things. It's, it's really complicated to figure out what it looks like to do good and to be, be good stewards of our money and, and be, be voting with our, our resources to some extent, but also like, how do we just survive and not, and not drive ourselves crazy? Um, we can look for all the best products and boycott everything, but then we're still buying it from Walmart and that's a whole nother bag of worms. So I don't, I don't know. I did just discover I have more peanut butter than I thought. I looked over in that direction and discovered a whole new thing of peanut butter on top of, on top of the peaches. But anyway, exactly. Exactly. We have to, we have to discuss food. It's, it's one of our core loves. I mean, it, everybody everybody loves our, our food. Usually the junk food queen, I can survive on sugar alone, but have been craving vegetables. Well, maybe your body's uh, excited for spring and it's like, all right, all right, let's 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 get all the extra nutrients we, we need or something like that. Because, yeah. Yeah, I go back and forth. Like, my taste buds crave things, but then my body's like... We also need our vitamins. Please give me some vitamin. Exactly. It is in, it is in the rules. I don't think it has to be. I guess it depends on what kind of veggies you're dealing with. I feel like there are some types of veggies that roast easier than others. But, like, I imagine if you thaw out the broccoli before you roast it, you could do, like, Parmesan Parmesan, garlic powder, onion powder, um, maybe some Italian seasoning, mix that together and toss it on a cookie sheet and and roast it for a little while, I would think. I don't know. I don't make enough veggies. I really don't. Um, last week's veggies where I chopped everything up, the carrots, the celery, the onion, chopped it up and mixed it in with the quinoa. And it was just kind of like sauteed and then mixed with the quinoa. So I got to, I got to get better at veggies. I really do. My grandmother was the best at it. She would always have like the two veggies and a little bit of meat. Everything was balanced. I don't have that capacity right now. So Ooh, pizza. 
I could go for some pizza. I was thinking the other day about Mountain Mike's pizza. They got me with that personal pizza for, for Pi Day. Now I know that just a couple of blocks away, I, I could get a little personal pizza whenever I want it. I think it's a little overpriced. I think it's like 10 bucks. But it's a little personal pizza. Oh, for me. I haven't gone back there since, but I, I have thought about it. I could have pizza and, and books that we should pick a day that we're going to do pizza. We should. We should pick our own, our own book it day where we're going to have pizza to celebrate achieving our reading goals. I mean, you know, end of a quarter, halfway into a new quarter, summer reading program. I don't know. We should, we should pick a pizza, a pizza book a day. That would be fun. And if we're going to share with our family, we don't have to get a personal pizza. We could get a, a big pizza and have big slices. Breakfast all day is also delicious. Stuffed French toast is my favorite. Oh, I should make French toast while I've got those extra berries. I used to make French toast and artisano bread is the best bread for French toast, in my opinion. But I would make the French toast and then I'd get a little bit of cream cheese and whip it up. And then I'd put it in between two slices of French toast. It wasn't really stuffed French toast, but it was kind of stuffed. Also bacon. <sighs> Food is so good. I am so grateful that God made us taste buds because that's being able to taste things. If, fueling would not be the same if it was just like, you know, inject your nutrients three times a day, then it would be like the vitamins I always forget to take. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you should totally try it. Snazzy or snazzy snazzy's right. You should totally try it staff and let us know. Um, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's so complicated and yeah, it's so complicated. It's not that I don't care. It just gets complicated. And then we talk about, you know, the publisher, boycotts and at what point are we hurting the publisher versus hurting the author and at what point do we value the I don't know I just don't know pizza and breakfast me and uh, yeah we canceled Netflix we canceled almost all of our streaming um, I think we kept I think we kept YouTube now I have to look. Do we keep YouTube and Hulu? I think I wrote this down. Maybe I didn't. Oh, we kept YouTube and Prime because we needed Prime for the shipping. That's what we did. We figured uh, there was no sense in having all of the things. If there's a specific thing that we want to watch, we can get a month of it and then cancel afterwards. But everybody wants us to just keep everything all the time. And, you know, for a while we were sharing it among the siblings. Like, you know, you pay for this one, I'll pay for this one all the way over. But we're not supposed to share anymore and we don't need to just keep them. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't want to advocate torrenting, but some people have mentioned torrenting again to me and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not there, but I understand. Don't grind anything, just toss the carrots in a bit of oil, shake the pepper flakes until I'm happy with it. Spicy and sweet and awesome. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds really good. I could, I could, I could see that. I, I have written it down on the Ace Hardware ad because, because Ace Hardware is is the pamphlet that I have hanging around. Yes. Um. Yeah. All right. Good to see you. Come back when you're able. Oh, I love milk duds. They're delicious. And when the um. Oh, what are they? The um, 
the robin eggs that come out at Easter. I don't know why they're just a little bit different, but those are so good. I didn't get any Easter candy. Well, I didn't buy any Easter candy this year. Somebody gave me one little Easter bunny and I ate it with my husband. But I did not get any, any of those eggs this year. Malted, malted milk bowls, milk duds, all of that. So good. Okay, that's that's fair. They do. They say, you know you want me. I'm delicious. Okay, yes. I thought I needed to go to Costco and get some more because I can see the one over there. It's it's mirrored. Okay. The one that is in my kitchen is almost empty. And I was like, snaps, I need to get some more. And I almost bought some more. But I was like, no, I should wait and get it at Costco when it's a better deal. But lo and behold, in the backup pantry, there is one more thing of peanut butter, along with so much salsa and gun dried tomatoes. Also salad dressing. Anyway, more food. Okay, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. My dad is a huge fan of pistachios. My mom likes cashews. I think I've got some peanuts for our upcoming trip. Yeah. I'll do peanut butter on the celery. I got a whole bunch of celery last time I was at Costco, so I might do some of that. And I think I've got raisins over here, which I am experimenting to see if any of my uh, fatigue will go away if I increase my iron. So that would be a way to do that, peanut butter and, and raisins. I don't know if, I was assuming they were fresh veggies that were frozen or maybe parboiled. Because I always have to steam them in the microwave. Maybe that's just to warm them up. I don't know. Let's see. Most frozen vegetables are blanched in hot water or steamed before freezing, which makes many people think they're already cooked and risk free. People let their toddlers snack on frozen veggies or might toss them into a salad without cooking them first. But though frozen produce is convenient and generally safe, it may harbor bacteria that causes foodborne illness, such as Listeria monocytogens, monocytogens or Salmonella. Uh, in 2016, there was a recall of more than 450 frozen products from at least 42 brands because they were linked to a multi-state outbreak of Listeriosis. Since then, frozen fruits and vegetables have been recalled at least 20 times because of possible contaminations with listeria, hepatitis A, or norovirus, according to data from the FDA, often discovered as a result of routine testing, not because someone got sick. It can be contaminated at a farm or when it's harvested. Any additional step, including packaging at a processing facility, can create another opportunity to introduce foodborne pathogens like listeria or E. coli to food. It's like listeria is of particular concern. Most health, most health, most healthy adults exposed typically don't get sick, although some may have fever and diarrhea, similar to other foodborne germs. But people who do develop it often need to be hospitalized and about 20 percent die. Those at high risk are immunocompromised, newborns or older adults and pregnant people. An infection can lead to miscarriage. And once listeria contaminates a production facility, getting rid of it can be extremely difficult, especially because freezing doesn't kill it and it can grow and thrive at refrigerator temperatures. So, I guess I'm going to keep thoroughly cooking it. That, mm hmm. Yes, I love Book It Day. But yeah, no, I don't think that anybody will be formally associated with this. It would just have to be a day that we decide we're all going to go buy pizza, which would be fun.
There you go. Yeah. Even if they are cooked, they're not roasted and roasted veggies are good. Yes. Yes. Stuff French toast with, with, a, with a good bread, cream cheese, mixed berries, whipped cream. I've got some heavy whipping cream and Jen gave me a, um, one of those little milk frother whisks. I wonder if that would make a small amount of whipped cream to put right on top of it. Powdered sugar syrup. I do have a little bit of whatever they're now calling Aunt Jemima's milling. I can't read it from here. Aunt Jemima's. I've got Aunt Jemima's. Um. Ooh, just bought Easter candy from Target. What kind did you get? I need to get some soap from Target. Maybe I should go and see how their Easter candy is. I knew that after Easter was going to be better priced. Um, but then I assumed by today everything would already be gone. Maybe I'm wrong. Yep, yep. Cashews are delicious. Cashew butter. Mm-hmm. I, I could see that. I see a little bit of cashew butter with either a little bit of caramel or a little bit of honey and then dip the apples in it. I think that could be good. Have you tried Trader Joe's? I think I used to get it at Trader Joe's. I have not gotten any recently. I haven't been in Trader Joe's recently. I think it's been like six months since I've been to Trader Joe's. But I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Yes, Trader Joe's sells the almond better. Lots of love for the cut. I was trying to say cashews and nuts at the same time. Lots, lots of love for, for the nuts, the cashews, all of that. Target apparently carries an almond butter. Let us see. Yes, there's good and gather creamy almond butter. Costco, if you have a Costco, has a creamy almond butter, according to this. Um, there's also a crunchy almond butter from Good and Gather. So, yeah. We used to do, my brother was, was trying to be super high protein for a while. We did almond butter. I think it was almond butter and honey and oats. And there might have been nuts or something in there. We'd make make like no bake cookie balls with that. And he liked those pretty well. Have not made those in forever. Can't find it in Walmart or Kroger. Let's see. I see Sam's Choice has one, but I'm not. Let's see, there's a there's a little simple truth smooth almond butter at Kroger. I don't know how many of the stores have it. Um, it looks like a smaller jar, but it, I don't know. Kit Kats, Lint Chocolate, Reese's, and Peeps. Those are good choices. Those are very good choices. We got straw, was it strawberry and cream? Um, yeah, strawberry and cream lint Lindor balls after Valentine's Day, and those were really good. They were white chocolate. Oh, yes, the employees totally deserve a day off. Um, I can't keep track of who's staying open and who's closing, all of that fun stuff. But yeah, no, the employees totally deserve their holiday. Uh, I've done so much drive up with, with Target this last year because then I don't go in and see all the other cool stuff. I heard somebody say that Target was doing those clear, those clear vases. Have y'all seen those clear vases? Um, they're supposed to be sort of book shaped and then they've got like a title on them and you're supposed to be able to put the flowers in them. I keep seeing them on Instagram, but they were saying that the Target corner had them for like three bucks. Um, and I don't know if that's a mini version, but it seemed really cool. I just I don't have the right spot. Um, but it's it's very tempting. I feel like some places just keep going back and forth. And I don't know if it's social pressure or 
or what the deal is. But yeah, I feel like some places have gone back and forth a couple of times. Um, we got wings for, for Easter. We, we just picked them up and uh, took them to go. Um, it looked like maybe the the dining room was not open for Easter unless they just didn't figure anybody was staying. And so they didn't bother to open the dining room properly. But um, they were doing pickup orders when we went to the to the wing place on Sunday. But then a couple of years ago, I'm pretty sure they were closed. Um, yes, yes, they are so good. Um, yeah delicious. I had not seen them before. I have not seen them since. It's probably just as well. But man, so good. Yeah. We're 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 definitely a food crowd around here. Definitely a food crowd around here. And here we are. I'm looking at this like, I feel like our, our time here is just flying by. Flying by. Um, yeah, but that's so good. It's all, all I, I can't say all of their truffles are delicious, but most of their truffles are delicious. I like a good truffle. I do not like dark chocolate. That's the thing. I can do white chocolate. I can do milk chocolate. I thought I would hear more about pink chocolate. I feel like it was in the news for a minute. Everybody's like, we've discovered pink chocolate. And then I never saw much of it. Yes, they are. They are very good. Let's see. Let me look and see if they're. I thought they were holiday specific, but it looks like maybe you can get them off Amazon. <laughs> you can get a 19 ounce pack for $19 on Amazon. It may not be worth it. Um, there's a candy corner bulk for 35 bucks. Valentine's limited edition. Yeah. I think you'll have to keep an eye out for them around Valentine's day, unless you would like to overspend on them, but they were good. Yeah, anything strawberry and cream is good. That's that's fair. I wasn't sure if it was going to taste that different or if it was going to be like, you know, slightly different white chocolate. Um, my brother's girlfriend does some home bakery kind of stuff sometimes. And she's done colored chocolate, you know, baking chips, what have you. And it, it's been pretty good, but it, it tastes the same. It just has different colors. See, there you go. Put a pin in it until next year. That's the way to do it. Yeah, I kept hearing about pink chocolate. Let me see what they're saying about it now. Ruby cocoa. According to somebody, ru ruby chocolate is made from the ruby cocoa beans, which are found in Ecuador, Brazil, and Ivory Coast, similar to grapes that are grown for fine wines. The beans are influenced by their environment and they're by cultivated in specific climate conditions. A Belgian Swiss cocoa company produced it as a distinct product in September 2017 after beginning the development in 2004. It boasts a sweet berry-like flavor with a slightly tart afternote. It's completely unlike milk or dark chocolate, seeing that it's not overly milky or bitter. Um, but it uh, requires sourcing ruby cocoa beans, which are expensive and challenging to obtain. So, yeah, that's probably why I'm not getting a bunch of it. Weird, like weird white chocolate didn't get more. I don't think I even finished the bar. Okay. All right. We will all find it at some point and we will try it once to say we did and then go back to to our regular white and milk chocolates. 
or dark chocolate if that's your jam you can have all the dark chocolate i i i like my chocolate sweet if it's if i'm gonna have it it, it better be sweet i think that's also why i don't like some chocolate chip cookies because they use semi-sweet and i'm like i have all this sweet cookie and then it's not as sweet why would i want a bite of less sweet chunk i also just don't like chunks in my in my baked goods most of the time i like pecan pies because it's all softened up a little bit but yeah yeah we were talking on uh, saturday morning uh, a group of friends and somebody was saying how disappointing it is when you bite into uh, an oatmeal raisin cookie you thought it was chocolate and then you get a raisin and then a couple of us were saying no it's really disappointing when you think you're biting into a raisin cookie and you get chocolate so yeah oddities all around but we are supposed to be doing another sprint so let us see if we can manage another sprint here let us see all right there we go i was not trying to stay that big while we sprint all right so get your snacks your dinner whatever food is uh is on tap for you if that is what you all are headed for grab your books whatever floats your boat and uh don't forget to hydrate. I will see you all in 45 minutes. Happy reading.
back. I'm just, you know, melting the butter on my Hawaiian rolls. I was going to get a little bit of the roast with my roll, but then I realized we were so close to starting back up again. I was like, eh, I should, I should not do that. I don't recommend freezing your Hawaiian rolls. They don't, uh, they don't do great. But they're still better than no Hawaiian rolls. Stassi is back. Welcome back. Sister called. We've been repairing her truck. Oh, that sucks. I hope things will smooth out soon. Finally getting to the crafty project. That's helpful. Yay. Mine aren't usually either. I think they were on sale or something. So I got a pack to eat and a pack to put in the freezer. One of those little packs. So pulled them out earlier. Mm -hmm. Got nothing red. Spent the whole time looking at the Tandoor menu and sorting clothes. Ooh, I should look at the Tandoor menu. I, I got to find an Indian buffet around here. I want like a buffet of Indian food. You know where there's one like 90 minutes from here? But I'm not actually sure if they do it during the week or if they just do it on weekends. And I love a good Indian buffet because I don't know what everything's called, but a little of this and a little of that is so good. But I always end up with butter chicken or chicken masala. When I'm uh, having to order something specifically. Mm -hmm. Sorting clothes, less fun, but but very important. My husband just had to ask me if he had any more of his workout shirts. And I did have two in the clean laundry basket, but I got to get on top of it to make sure. I get his drawer restocked tomorrow. Kiana's off work. That is very good news. Toya has some leftover from Easter. About to pick up the daughter from dance. Nice taco truck outside. Oh, that sounds good. I love a good taco truck. I love a good taco. My husband asked me last week if uh, I wanted him to bring home some tacos. And he did bring home tacos. Tacos, rice, and beans. Very good. I just got to remember the place across the way does not have the good Owl House store. I got to go and uh, stick with the Asada there. It's not bad. It's just not great. It's, it doesn't have the flavor that I'm expecting. Their salsas are delicious. Um, the tortillas are good, but... Wait, no, the other place has good tortillas. Anyway, the salsa is delicious. The horchata, the horchata is the other thing that's good, but about health stories. <laughs> Completed volume one of Attack on Titans. Love Hawaiian rolls bread. I was just complaining about our supermarket not carrying them. How do how do they not carry them? Maybe maybe I think I've been spoiled. Our supermarkets always have them. That would be terrible. What I can't get is I can't get good pita bread. There was a small company that was stocking theirs in our local shop. And then, I don't know what happened. They disappeared. I've asked about them. And now they've got, they intermittently have the fair leads. And it's just not good enough. Like, they're not bad, but I need you to consistently have the pita bread. Preferably... Preferably the good stuff. I just love bread. It's so good. So good. Yeah. So y'all know what I was thinking about. Yeah. 
I gotta refigure out a place for my yarn because I am not getting enough knitting done to have two baskets of yarn in the living room. Maybe one basket, but not two. Yeah, anyway. So we are almost out of time. Does anybody have uh, any exciting plans for the rest of the week? I've got to sort out my stuff for Tennessee, which, you know, I'm not leaving this week, but I leave late next week. So uh, I got to start making sure all of my ducks are in a row. supposed to get our taxes done this week on Saturday. I think they finally gave us an appointment. So it's not fun, but I'll be glad to have them done. Snazzy will be doing a mud bog on Saturday and probably doing truck repairs on Sunday. All right. Mud bog. Okay. That sounds like fun. I'm assuming the truck that you are repairing on Sunday is going to be going through the bog on Saturday and thus you're anticipating repairs or is it a different one and it needs repairs so you're using a different one for Saturday? Or are you just attending? Maybe you're just, I don't know. Did your taxes on Saturday? That's good. That's good. Fun. It always creeps up on us every time. Yep. Anyway. Yeah. Having nothing to do on a Saturday is excellent. We were supposed to do a tea par party on Saturday morning, I think about that. It's later than I usually do, but one of the ladies wanted to have us all over for tea, and far be it for me to turn down uh, lemon curd and finger sandwiches. Totally different truck. We're just attending the mud bog. Sisters Daily Drivers out of commission until we return, repair the damage to the drive shaft. Oh. I hope that... Uh, it's to going better than uh, it sounds right now. Huh. Somebody with a pair of fishing poles in their backpack walking their bike away from the estuary. That's nice. We don't see much of that around here. I guess it's warm enough for people to go fishing now. Anyway, can't go too much worse. I am so sorry. That's terrible. Ooh, favorite teas. Um, I like a good green ginger peach tea. Um. In a completely different realm, I enjoy good chai. Ginger peach tends to be my default these days. Um, or a honey ginseng. Honey ginseng is good. Um, I like peach tea. I like my tea to have some sort of sweet in it, whether it's a natural sweet or a little bit of sweetener. I think that's how that goes. What about y'all? Anybody uh, a big fan of tea? I'm looking forward to it almost being lemonade season. I love a good fruit lemonade. I'm a big fan of a good fruit lemonade. Strawberry, blueberry, raspberry. I've done huckleberry. I don't think I've ever done a blackberry lemonade. 
always looking for tea. Rex, I like peach and chai. Green tea, peach tea. Yeah. That's good stuff. Not a tea person, but I can get behind lemonade. Yep. Yep. Um, a good strawberry lemonade with a little bit of tea in it, I think can be very good. What I can't get used to is the, the, I don't know if it's Coke or Pepsi that makes the, ras I think it's brisk, raspberry lemonade that, no, I'm sorry, raspberry iced tea that's super sweet. That I have to cut in half with something. Lemonade, water, unsweetened tea. I just can't do that much sweetness. I, I. I'm a failure as anything relating to Southern. I, I don't like my sweet tea quite that sweet. But I can do a good lemon tea in the summer. That's not bad. Or just lemon in my tea. Blackberry lemonade. Yep. Yep. So many good things. So many. But yeah. My husband is about to be off for the evening, so I am going to go and uh, bid him farewell. Thank you all for joining me this evening. I did enjoy hanging out with you guys very much. I anticipate being back here next week, hopefully with Jen. Hopefully Jen will be feeling better by then. And I expect that Jen will have sprints on Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. I'm sure you'll be notified if that's not the case. But yeah, that is that is it for us this evening. I hope you all have a good rest of your evening. Hope you enjoy your food and beverages. And uh, we'll see you back here next week. Have a good night. Bye.